In this video, we'll begin discussing the superposition principle, or the fact that any wave function can be written as a linear combination of eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. So we start off with a function of x. So we're going to represent any function of x as equal to a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some coefficient cn times psi n of x. Typically, what we'll consider this to be is some eigenfunction of a Hamiltonian operator. So this is equal to, in Dirac notation, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn times ket vector n, or basis vector n. And that's going to be equal to the ket vector, which is our function here, which we can represent by the coefficients for the various basis functions of psi n of x. So the set of all of our our wave functions there, we can say our basis vectors, and together they form a basis set. So this <clears throat> individual uh, psi n here is a called a basis function. Uh, these coefficients, which are in general going to be able to be complex numbers, they don't necessarily need to be real numbers, are the coefficients of our, uh, of our vector which represents our function in this basis set. So if we have f of x, which is under the same boundary conditions as all the basis functions, it's in the same number of variables, it has the same uh, length of its dimensions, then f of x can be any function in what is called the space of the basis set. <clears throat> so these basis functions can represent any function in their space. So the overlap <clears throat> integral of psi m star and psi n, so integral of minus infinity to infinity dx. If there's more dimensions, we integrate over all space in all of them, of psi star m psi n. For Hermitian operators, uh, which the psi n are going to be eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator, the total energy operator, which is a Hermitian operator. If they are orthogonal to one another, they're going to be what's called the Kronecker delta for this overlap. So delta m n is going to be 1 if m equals n, so they're normalized if m equals n, so integral psi star n psi n equals 1. If m is not equal to n, if this is 1 and this is 2, this is 10 and this is 35, then they are 0, they are orthogonal to one another. So 1 if m equals n, they are orthogonal they are normalized, 0 if m not equals n, they are orthogonal. So this Kronecker delta function is a statement that our basis set here is orthonormal. It is both orthogonal and normalized. Okay, so let's look at what this overlap integral would be. That would be the integral from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x of psi m star times f of x psi m star times f of x, which is represented as a linear combination of all of these basis functions. So that's equal to sum from n equals 1 to infinity of our f here, ket vector, is sum from n equals 1 to infinity, cn of n. So multiply that times the bra vector m. We, get, we can factor out the cn, cn m n. Now it's an, in, now it's an overlap integral of basis function m and basis function n times a coefficient, which belongs to our vector, which represents our function. So this is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn. These overlap integrals of our basis functions are going to be Kronecker delta. So we substitute that in there. So this value is 0 at every single value of n except for the value where m equals n where m equals n, this value is 1, and where, and where m equals n, this is going to be cm. So the result here is that this sum gives us the value cm. So this overlap here is going to be cm. The overlap of a basis function with our function is the coefficient of that function in our function. Okay, so the function f is, again, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn times the basis function n. 
we just saw that cn up here is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of n star times f so doing cn instead of cm here so that gives us the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of our basis function n times this overlap integral n with f but we'll notice that we can factor this out such that we have this acting as an operator on the function f because all of this sum here is just something multiplying times the function f so all of this stuff here since we started with f has to be equal to 1 so this operator where we're summing from n equals 1 to infinity in principle there will be an infinite number of basis functions in the basis set if this sum goes to infinity of a ket times a bra vector which will act on our given ket vector for our function there in direct notation this is equal to 1 and if this is equal to 1 this is called the resolution of the identity so this is both a statement of the completeness of the basis set if this is 1 then the the statement that we can represent any function f of x in the space of these basis functions it's a statement that these this basis functions are indeed complete and this is true and we can also uh, use this fact in some cases where we're deriving some results uh, further down the line but the main point of this video is the fact that we can represent any function any wave function or any function in general as a linear combination of eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian which are basis functions which form a basis set and represent any function given the proper choice of coefficients.